ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the central bank of india q4 fy24 earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr raju parnawal from antique stock broking thank you and over to you sir thank you suraj good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining post regional conference call of central bank of india from the management side today we have with us uh, shri mv rao md and ceo shri vivek vai executive director shri mv murli krishna executive director shri mahendra dohare executive director and cfo shri mukul dandige now without any further delay i hand over the call to the md sir for his opening remarks post which we will open the floor for the q and a thank you and over to you sir yeah thank you uh, raju and very good afternoon to all of you and uh, we are very happy to share with you that uh, now we have recorded the highest ever net profit of uh, 2549 crores and just i will give the performance highlights later my cfo will give you the uh, details uh now as far as the highlights are concerned our total business have grown by 10.34% to 6.36 lakh crore earlier it was 5.77 lakh crore total deposits now at 3.85 lakh crores that is a growth of 7.16% from the previous year and uh, let me tell you that in our total deposits our certificate of deposits is zero and uh, kasa deposits we have 50.02% one of the best kasa ratios we are maintaining and gross advances has grown by 15.60% now it stands at 2.51 lakh crore credit deposit ratio now it has improved to 65.59% in the previous uh, march it was 60.86 gross npa has improved in the previous year it was 8.44 now it is at 4.5 net npa which was 1.77 now it has come down to 1.23 and the provision coverage ratio is improved now is at 93.58% and net interest income has grown by 10.34% net interest margin now is at 3.40 in the previous year it was 3.47 Uh, return on assets has improved to 0.76 return on equity has improved to 2.92% on quarter to quarter and for fi it is 9.53 and uh, crar is improved to 15.08% so this is the highlights of uh, our financial results and uh, details uh, just uh, our cfo mr mukul dandige will explain you thank you thank you sir so the total interest income has grown by 20.28% to 30722 crores the total interest expenses have grown to 17826 crores at 28.66% because of the lag effects of the rate transmission the net interest income is uh, at 12896 crores a growth of 10.34% and the total income growth has been at 19.60% and the total income stood at 35434 crores the total expenditure has increased to 28071 crores a growth of 23.43% the operating profit showed an improvement of 6.96% and the operating profit was at 7363 crores if we uh, take a, take away the provisions of 4814% which is a dip of 9.20% over the last year the net profit has surged uh, by 61.13% to 2549 crores which is the highest in the history of the bank the fee based income and total other uh, non interest income has uh, improved on a y o y basis if we see Uh, it has improved to 4711 crores from 4084 crores an improvement of 15.35% and 
the interest expenses have increased by 28.66% overall interest paid on deposits there is an increase of 26.29% to 16908 crores the operating expenses have increased by 15.28% to 10245 crores out of which the staff cost increase is 12.63% uh, because of the wage revision and uh, other uh, terminal dues payable and the other operating expenses have increased to to 3933 crores an increase of 9.80% <coughs> the provisions part the provision on npa reduced to 3391 crores a reduction of close to 4% the income tax liability has gone up from 1,063 crores to 1,504 crores, an improvement of 41.49 percent. Thus, the total provisions have dipped uh, by 9.20 percent to 4,814 crores compared to 5,302 crores in the last financial year. The gross and net NPA, as Sir has said, has improved. Gross NPA has improved from 8.44 percent to 4.50 percent. And net NPA has improved from 1.77% to 1.23% in the current financial year. The uh, net NPA, if we see sector wise, we are now comparable with almost all the other public sector banks. We are in line. The provision coverage ratio has improved to 93.58%. And the slippage ratio on a quarter on quarter basis has come down to 0.57 in March 24 quarter. The credit cost also has come down to 0.85% in the March 24 quarter. The uh, total uh, restructured book and special mention accounts, we have given details on our slides 21 and 22. The total restructured book stands at 6,455 crores. And the total special mention accounts, including all up to 5 crores and above 5 crores uh, accounts, stand at 16,919 crores, 6.32% of our total uh, advanced book. The capital adequacy ratio has improved from 14.12% in March 23 to 15.08% and the leverage ratio has also improved from 473 to 5.13% during this financial year. Business uh, details uh, already MD sir has informed you that business has, uh, uh, how the business growth has happened. I would like to touch upon the uh, treasury performance also. The overall uh, in income, I mean, the aggregate investment has increased from 1,42,653 crores to 1,49,538 crores. The interest on investment has, has improved from 8,715 crores to 9,510 crores, and the yield has improved from 6.26 to 6.57. The yield, including the trading profit, has improved to 6.91, an improvement of 50 bips. And despite all this, we have been able to contain the M duration and the uh, PV01 of, of our portfolio. These all were the major highlights uh, of the performance for this current financial year. Now, Nick, uh, adding to this, just uh, let me highlight you some of the initiatives what we have taken uh, during the year gone by. Number one is we have established our integrated customer care. Uh, that is the one-stop uh, uh, solution for all the grievance handling and also uh, for uh, out, uh, outward, outbound uh, marketing. For both the things we have established, it is a state-of-art technology we have uh, uh, employed there. Uh, with the all uh, recent uh, technology, uh, uh, what you call that? Gen AI, uh, those uh, tools were deployed. Uh, so for the past one and a half months, uh, it is working fine and it is stabilized. And going forward, that uh, integrated customer care service will be utilized fully. Next uh, initiative, what we have uh, uh, rolled out is the collection management system uh, with the uh, integration with our war room for the recovery. Uh, uh, that uh, that collection management system works with our outsourced vendors where the feet on street people are also employed. That is the second initiative. Third is our Cent Neo, uh, what uh, we explained in our earlier briefing. 
that our technology platform uh, with a uh, lot of uh, investment that we started. Now products are being rolled out within 15 days. Uh, some four products we are rolling out uh, through our uh, Sent Neo, that is the transformation of our uh, digital uh, platforms. And then Omnichannel, that is on the mobile, that is uh, also uh, is slated for uh, rolling out in the month of uh, July. So these are all the new initiatives what we have taken. And uh, uh, earlier initiative of co-lending, that, uh, that part we will continue to focus with uh, much more trust this year because uh, this time we have reached a total outstanding figure of 11,000 crores. Uh, we have tie-ups with uh, 27 NBFCs. And uh, in this financial year, we have a target of uh, having tie-up with the 50 NBFCs uh, uh, to reach the portfolio of 25,000 crores. These are all the new initiative parts. Thank you. And it is uh, open for our uh, analysts or whosoever uh, logged in for any questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Again, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. Our first question is from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Ajcon Global. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my compliments to you, sir, for yet another quarter and the whole year of the very good result of the bank. Sir, Thank you. Uh, having, uh, having said that, now, sir, going forward, uh, now since the central bank has now again have almost reached to or reaching to its past glories, uh, how do we see the, the coming year now going forward? Are we... Uh, still going to be a little conservative in our targets and estimates or we want to open up and uh, a bank of our size uh, where a lot of scope is there to grow, uh, you know, rapidly as compared to other uh, some of the other large peer banks. So I want to hear, sir, about your, your plans uh, or your ideas for the uh, next whole year for the bank, sir. Where, where are we heading, sir? Okay. Uh, Ajmer, sir, thank you. Uh, let me give you the big picture so that uh, you can work out the uh, details. Uh, we would like to grow the business at the rate of uh, uh, 12 to 14%. Okay. With that, CD ratio, we want to improve it from 65 to 70. That will be 70 to 72 is our uh, band for the next uh, March 25. So once we are ramping up our CD ratio, definitely our credit book is also going to grow. And at the same time, uh, now there is a slight shift what uh, we would like to make in our credit book uh, balancing is we were sticking to the RAM and the corporate at 65 and 35 with plus or minus 5%. Now slightly we are revising that our RAM will be around 63 and uh, corporate will be at 37 with plus or minus uh, uh, one uh, percent. This is how we are working out this time. That is the slight shift will be there from the RAM to corporate. Two percentage basis points will be shifted to the corporate side from the retail. Yes, sir, uh, sir uh, now uh, where do we see the ROA uh, which has come up to now 0 0.76 uh, for this uh, quarter? And uh, with this kind of mix, increasing RAM 63 and corporate 37. Yeah, our our uh, target for ROA is one for the March 25. Oh, that's great, sir. That yeah. will be very good. Uh, yeah. So now coming, coming to sir, this uh, you also said that the NBFC and uh, you know uh, 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 participating with them uh, and increasing the 
But the way the RBI is going a little tough on uh, the existing uh, financial sector, especially on the NBFCs, and uh, uh, how do you see going forward? Uh, don't you see that there will be some pressure even on the NBFCs also, and on the bank on the as a whole also for this uh, entire RAM category, and especially uh, in the areas of uh, you know personal loans and uh, uh, retail loans. Don't you see that there will be some pressure on that or the uh, the margin fight also come uh, little bit down because of that so uh, number one is what rbi is doing there is no comment from our side he is the regulator number two is as far as our approach in the co lending with the nbfcs it is as a business model we have adopted this and wherever weak links that were there in our traditional structure is being complemented by the strength what nbfcs were having so with that concept we have moved and it is working well and going ahead also we don't foresee any type of issues in our co lending model because there is 80 20 is there and our uh, shortcomings or some gaps in the collection and monitoring mechanism is taken care by the nbfc these two things are working well for us and uh, we don't foresee a, any problem for the uh, uh, coming period sir my last question in this round is on our recovery front uh, covering all the all the all the areas of the recovery from uh, uh, you know nclt narcl uh, selling to the arcs and also the recovery from the return of account so how optimistic you are and where do we stand uh, as as far as the now 24 25 is concerned sir this uh, and finally uh, we are able to have yes our uh, gm uh, recovery will be sharing with you the details yes sir please sir yeah. Mr. Dohare? No, no, no. Our uh, GM. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, not executive director as a GM. Yeah, yeah. Please. In the current financial year, sir, we are aiming to have cash recovery of 4,000 crores. Approximately okay. 10 to 15 accounts are due for uh, settlement in NCLT. The amount is 2,500 crores, out of which 1,000 crore will be cash recovery. last year we sold uh, assigned five accounts to nrcl and this year also we have received the request and we are assigning six accounts to ncrc nrcl and amount is 500 crores okay and no, no, we are taking 500 crore of assets and yeah, yeah. i mean yeah what what is the average realization we expect Average realization from NARCL is the uh, 30 to 40 percent. Okay, of which 85 is SR, then 15 percent is cash payment. Yeah, very correct. Okay, sir. So overall uh, recovery target we will be reaching our uh, gross NPA target, which we have already said uh, 3.67 percent. Definitely, we will be achieving it. Okay. Okay. No. Besides this, as well as sir, we have a sizable pool of uh, return of accounts. So yes, this year also, uh, I mean, we have been able to recover close to 1433 crores uh, out of those uh, return of accounts. We intend to further step up uh, recovery efforts in these return of accounts, and maybe in the range of uh, 1500 to 1800 crores, if we are able to recover in the next financial year. that is going to give us some boost in in our operating income because that yeah, will go directly into pnl straight to straight to bottom line yes sir uh, sir any 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 color on that uh, recovery of on that aviation account uh, are we selling the collaterals and uh, realizing something out of the 17 1800 crore which we are uh, no of yeah, course yeah, that, yeah. Is a, hey. that is not a return of account but uh, uh, what I are the recovery is, uh, prospects hey, from in our books we have provided 100% for that number one oh okay. Okay. and number number 2 is uh, now uh, we are uh, taking all the actions which are required and as far as the land parcel which is there already we have published the public notice uh, under surface fee and uh, we are proceeding on that oh that's great 
Thank you very much, sir, for this round. Thank you very much. Thank If you. time permits, I'll come back again. Thank yeah. you. Thank And all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, congrats on the good quarter. Uh, I just wanted to understand what is our NIM expectation for next year, and what will be our driver for ROA improvement from 0.63 to 1 percent. Uh, see the NIM, uh, uh, we we were at 3.40 percent as far as this uh, financial year is concerned. For March quarter, we were at uh, 3.58. So we expect that we we will be uh, ab uh, above 3 percent as far as the NIM is concerned. Secondly, uh, you are saying ROA 1 percent drivers, right? So if yes. you see my my net profit surge by almost 61 percent from 1582 uh, crores to 2549 crores this year. So we we expect that this uh, would continue further uh, because because you know the ROA will have uh, assets uh, thing also. So if we are able to recover more from the return of assets and other uh, fee based income, the the Uh, I mean, th that can support our operating profit. So in that case, uh, the uh, ROA will will be definitely where we intend to reach uh, in the range of one percent. Okay, so sir, I, what I understand, our NIM might be lower next year, but our credit cost will also be lower. Right. Yeah, NIM uh, will will not come down drastically. What we would like to tell is, in the earlier calls also, we used to tell that. We will be above three. That that is sacrosanct for us. And whatever the upside that comes, we will always be striving hard on that. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Uh, that that's all from my end. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Suvarna from Money Controls. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Continue. Yeah, hi sir. Firstly, congratulations on your results. Uh, I just wanted to understand uh, how much slippages you got uh, in this quarter, uh, and this is from which segment? Yes, sir. See the total slippages during this uh, on our current quarter mm -hmm. were at one thousand one hundred and seventy-five crores. Yeah, one thousand one hundred and seventy-five crores. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, the slippages happened. One second. This slippages happened basically in the sector of MSME. Hmm. And uh, the slippages uh, majorly were in, in uh, MSME, around 292 crores. Agriculture, 200 crores. MSME, how much? 290 crores. 292 crores. 92. Okay. Retail, uh, retail around 134 crores, and corporate there was one account. Okay. Yeah. 170 crores. Okay. Around 170 crores from corporate. So uh, there is no one particular sector uh, which is a cause of concern. Which is that? Uh, what? Which, uh, which one is that one account of the corporate? No. Specific, we will not. No, no. Small, small correct. accounts, not a uh, large accounts in a corporate. In the okay. range of uh, 50 to 100, I guess. Yeah. Not of any big account has been slipped in this quarter. Okay, okay. So basically, the major majority of the slippages has came from MSME retail and the corporate segment, and the uh, rest is from the uh, rest of the. Uh, Part of it is around 200 crores. Part of it is in the. Yeah, yeah. 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 Part of it is in the. Come once again. Now the sectors basically agriculture around 200 crores, agriculture MSME around 292 crores, the retail 135 crores, and mm -hmm. around 170 crores are the corporate and others. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. And my second question is on the cost of funds. The uh, it has gone up by 76 basis point uh, on a yearly basis. That what I can see in your uh, investor presentation. So what are the projections uh, for the FY25 uh, considering the uh, geopolitical tensions? Yeah. Now, now you see uh, the repo rates in increase started increasing from the month of May 22. So uh, our our yield on advances started increasing immediately because the repo based uh, rates are all constitute almost 51-52 percent of our total advances. 
uh, however, the deposit rates, we increased the deposit rates uh, from December 22 months. So in March 23, if we see, there was only a three-month uh, uh, impact. Now the full impact has, has already happened, so we do not expect any uh, substantial increase in the uh, cost of deposit and cost of funds uh, going forward. Uh, if you see, our uh, yield on advances has also started to improve further, and it, it stands at 8.91 percent now. So it will it will uh, remain at the same level. That what that what can I expect? I mean, there will not be any uh, disproportionate increase in the cost of deposit vis-a-vis -vis the yield on advances. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, and uh, once again, congratulations for the result. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to ask questions, please press star and 1 on your touchstone phone now. Our next question is from the line of Franklin Moaris from Equintis Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so you mentioned the uh, ROA target of 1%, uh, uh, but in the presentation I see your ROA target is 0 0.75 to 0.85. Uh, so, where exactly is the discrepancy? That one has to be revised. Uh, okay. See, our target is to reach one. And I think uh, in the last uh, slide which is uploaded, uh, that range they have given, I think that will get corrected now. Okay, okay. So, this needs to be uh, uh, revised. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so secondly, uh, presently we are at 0 0.6 and we are targeting to reach uh, 1. Uh, we are already, our NIM is already higher uh, at 3.4 vis-a-vis our guidance uh, where we are expecting uh, NIM to be above 3. Uh, so where, uh, where, where is the uh, improvement going to come from? See, uh, even though the uh, financial year-wise our uh, ROA might be 0.6, but, but uh, for the current quarter it is 0.76. So, naturally, you, you must have seen my profitability. It has already had a consistency. So, going by the past uh, year's projections, the, the same consistency, uh, consistency is expected in this, uh, this financial year also. So, we'll start with an ROA of 0.76 from, from this quarter. So, uh, going forward by uh, March 25, we'll be able to touch one. Oh, and name oh. also, if you see, we are saying it will be about about three. But as the MD sir has said, uh, we intend that. Uh, I mean, we don't expect any sizable reduction in the name in the current financial year also. Okay, okay. And sir, lastly, like now, presently we have this uh, government stake at uh, 93 percent. Uh, but uh, you know, they, uh, we need to bring it down to 75 percent. Uh, so, and uh, there are other uh, public sector banks who have also, uh, you know. Uh, done or, uh, you know, uh, being uh, able to reduce it. So what is our glide path and uh, timeline in terms of, uh, you know, bringing down the stake? Uh, sir, uh, for this, already uh, we, we have engaged with the government. Uh, well, we are seeking for the OFS part. Uh, once the government clears that, then uh, this OFS part will come into play. Uh, that may be a single reduction or maybe in tranches. That will give us the room further. Uh, once we, we, we unlock our value, then we will be going for our QIP or uh, any other uh, sort of uh, raising the equity. Uh, so, but uh, any uh, bifurcation in terms of, uh, you know, your plans in terms of, uh, will, will it largely be OFS or, uh, you know, will this largely be a QIP? Uh, how exactly are we uh, going to reach this? Uh, and what, what, how much time are we uh, likely to take uh, to reduce, uh, to reach to 75%? Any indicate, indication will also help. No, actually this is a call uh, to be taken by the government, but our, our request is always there. Uh, whether if they are going to offload it through OFS, what will be the percentage that we will be coming to know in the uh, next two months. Then we will plan accordingly, then how much percentage that will be offloaded through OFS and what is that we have to take up through the QAP. So that uh, that combination we will work out uh, only after two months. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. 
the next question is from the line of Anil Pandey from the front page. Please go ahead. Congratulations, Mr. Rao, for 473 BPS growth in LDR, which we now call credit deposit ratio. Thank you. What I observed that uh, in numerator, we find 15.6% growth, and then denominator that is deposit 3.7.16% growth. Now, as we know that this CASA uh, is peaking in general in all the banks, so will we still consider further scaling down the bulk deposits, or you are forming some other strategy to increase the deposits to maintain this 60.59 LDR or further increase to 75 or something? See, as far as the CD ratio is concerned, that's what the guidance we have given. We will be targeting for 70 to 72. 70 to 72. Okay. So, and, uh, with this background, the what the combination of our uh, deposits we have, that we would like to maintain our CASA ratio minimum 50%. Coming to the, you know, uh, term deposits or the bulk or the high cost, we do not have any high cost deposits nor we raise any certificate of deposits from the market. It is a pure core deposits what we maintain. So, as far as the term deposits are concerned, this uh, CD ratio for maintaining the CD ratio, where we have to reach, that is worked out now with the 50% of cost. Very ambitious target and very good. Okay, next question is regarding the corporate credit you have mentioned, 84619 with the 69% growth per head. So, uh, can you give the components uh, how much is infra out of that and particularly this power sector government is focusing on this uh, renewable energy and solar power? I do not find the bifurcation of uh, those sectors in corporate coverage. Yeah, yeah, in the presentation it is not there. Yeah, well, we will, uh, we will uh, send you offline because uh, now, right now, it is not available uh, readily. Tell you, anyway, my regards yeah. to you from Anil Pandey. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karthik Solanki from Milara Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. I had a couple of questions from my end. Uh, so the first one is, uh, can I get the overall uh, return of pool amount and what would be the component of uh, NCLT and the non-NCLT? Bifurcation for the same. Okay. Return of pool is close to 35,000 crores right now. Okay. Uh, NCLT 26, sir. And NCLT, non-NCLT. NCLT accounts constitute uh, 215 accounts, 26,191 crores. Okay, sir. And, sir, uh, the second question is in the line of the interest income from uh, recovery of NPA accounts, uh, which forms a part of your uh, interest income. Right. Yeah. So this year uh, it has been at 1433 crores as I already told. The recovery from return of accounts, it constituted 1433 crores. So if I uh, want to quantify it in terms of percentage, uh, it, it, it is close to 4% of my return of accounts that we have been able to recover during this financial year. Uh, so I meant the, uh, so, uh, the recovery of NPA, what would be the component of interest income which is uh, recorded in uh, NII? It goes to the interest income. No, no, no. What he wants to say is, suppose if we have been able to recover upgrade more the account, more than upgrade the, more than the interest income, might not in that we will have to take out a data. But uh, this is pure recovery. 1433 crores is recovery out of my uh, return of accounts. You want to know the total uh, interest yes. income book from the NP accounts? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Okay. That comes in the upgradation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That will provide you offline, sir. Okay, okay, sir. So I'll take that offline. Okay. 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 Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next follow-up question is from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Matchcon Global. Please go ahead. 
thank you for giving this opportunity again <clears throat> uh, sir my uh, the first question in the second round is on the uh, total overall treasury operations sir the treasury income in this quarter has been very good at 600 and if you look at the segment wise uh, results 611.75 crore raised against 396.73 crores so i would like to know the total structure of uh, number one afs book uh, modified duration of afs and uh, what are the expecting i mean the rbi to you know little bit lower down the rates in the coming quarter so what kind of treasury profits or the uh, treasury income we are looking at गुड आफ्टरनून अजमेर अजी नमस्कार नो वी हैव ऑलरेडी बुक नो ट्रेजरी इनकम इज यू हैव सीन फ्रॉम द रिस्पॉन्स कि इट इज नाइन सिक्सटी फाइव क्रोर्स वी बुक इट इज मेनली नो कि वी कैपिटलाइज ऑन दी इक्विटी बुक वी इन्वेस्टेड इन मेनी ऑफ द आईपीओ एंड मेक गुड प्रॉफिट फ्रॉम द आईपीओ एंड ऑल्सो ऑन द बॉन्ड फेयर ऑल्सो वी मेड गुड प्रॉफिट And accordingly, we could able to record a good profit of 965 crores. Yes. Uh, and uh, we maintain a M duration of uh, uh, 1.88 as of March uh, 24 on AFS portfolio. And uh, coming to my AFS book, it is uh, 41,733 was the AFS book as of 31st March. And with a modified duration of 1.88, isn't it? Uh, at 1.88, yeah. We have been maintaining below two all through, at least uh, that, uh, till 31st March. So we are below that, and it is 1.8. Okay, sir. Point well taken, sir. Sir, my second uh, uh, question is on the now. Uh, when are we going for the new tax uh, regime? Like we have a deferred tax asset of 4,294 crores. So, so what are the what are the planning uh, for going to uh, uh, you know for the new tax regime? Maybe in 25-26. Uh, so Ajna ji, you have seen around 1500 crores. We were able to reduce the DTA for this financial year. So yes, going as per our expectation, we should be able to switch to the new tax regime by 26-27. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank at the time of implementation of the resolution plan it was 3723 crores and now it has come down to 1978 crores 7.56 so this is uh, uh, as per the resolution plan when this eight eight borrowers account overall amount is to be received or regularized these will have different uh, resolution plans sir there may be some uh, where purely there will be a, uh, i mean regularization of the account will be there in some cases there may be a restructuring which will be warranted in uh, some of the account may be the recall may be the uh, alternative ots must have been done nahi ye wala lagi aapka 7th june wala baat kar so ajwara ji For all these eight accounts, details can be provided to you. What is the uh, uh, RP in in each of these yes. accounts? Yes, sir. Please and yes, and uh, whether uh, uh, post uh, 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 implementation of the resolution plan, uh, can we also uh, go for uh, OTS with some of these accounts? Surely, if, if any such accounts where recall is marked and they, these are uh, already NPA, and if the party comes out with a notice offer which is acceptable to the bank, we can go in for OTS. Yes, because nowadays uh, that trend is going on. So right. maybe. So please uh, provide me that. My last question in this was little bit on this uh, note number 182, uh, buying of the uh, standard assets, acquiring. the standard assets sir here uh, of course the number of accounts are uh, many 95000 small accounts but if you look at the coverage of the tangible securities you know it is going down from 100% in 22 to 87% in march 23 to 51% in march 24 so is it because of the nature of uh, uh, accounts which we are acquiring uh, where we don't need uh, uh, higher tangible security 
In, uh, in these are these are all related to co-lending, uh, books, sir. There, uh, what is happening is uh, primarily if there are any MSME accounts, the primary security itself would be more than 100 percent, right. and the additional okay. co uh, uh, collateral security is uh, 50 percent. Because in uh, in retail, as you know, sir, mostly it will be housing loans, uh, where the security will be at least 110 percent, 125 percent of the books. So, so you 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 mean to say that this coverage of tangible security? Right. Doesn't include uh, uh, primary, the, the primary, uh, primary right. security. Right, sir. Okay, that's good, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Once again, all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: if you wish to join the question queue, please press star and one now. Our next follow-up question is from the line of Manish Suvarna from Money Control. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, in the last question, you mentioned that ki, uh, from the, of, of the total treasury gains of 965 crore, you have got uh, some uh, some prof, uh, some gains from your investment in in the IPOs. Uh, so, can you uh, uh, tell me the figure that how much uh, how much uh, which profit you got uh, from that IPO out of total 965 crores? One second. IPO will be around 50, 52 crores. Exact figure I'll tell you. But overall from the equity book now we got around 125 crores. 125 crores or from the equity book equity, and from the IPO? Equity trading and IPO both. From IPOs will be around 50 to 55 crores. 50 to 55 IPO. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and can you uh, can you name uh, the companies uh, uh, in which IPOs you are subscribed? You are all aware no IP was uh, but it was predominantly it was Tata and other MSME IPOs. A lot of MSME. A lot of MSME IPOs. Tata Tech we got the bigger. Tata uh, and a lot of uh, Tata Technologies. Tata Technologies. Okay, Tata Technologies and lot of uh, MSME. MSME. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sushil Choksi from Indus Equity Advisors. Please go ahead. Congratulations to Team Central Bank for a superb result and Thank a very you. positive guidance. So my first question starts with, uh, I would like to know more about our transformation journey, whether it's new or digital, digital-led initiatives which would transform the bank from where we are because across peers or any comparable banks, our CASA and our advances, we can transform the bank into a superior margin bank. Correct. These initiatives will lead to us where and what kind of expenditure we'll incur on the first question. Uh, very good afternoon. This is Ratan Kumar here, uh, who, uh, GMIT Digital, uh, who is leading the transformation uh, department, uh, digital transformation department. Uh, uh, a year back, we have started our digital journey, uh, our digital transformation in our bank, and we have initiated various projects, starting with uh, tech upgradation and API uh, middle layer reformation and so many other activities. Along with that, we have also taken up uh, uh, four major projects, uh, which is uh, one is uh, a super app, uh, that is omni-channel. The second is uh, a digital lending platform. The third is uh, integrated customer care. And the fourth is uh, uh, a digital collection management system. So these four major projects are going to drive uh, our uh, digital transformation journey. Uh, we have already uh, 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 rolled out uh, two major projects which are live now. One is the integrated customer care. The second is the collection management system. They are live now. They are uh, start. We have started the operations. The collection uh, management is operative from Bombay and Calcutta, and integrated customer care we have uh, done from uh, Mumbai and Hyderabad. So very shortly, around six journeys, uh, we are uh, digital journeys in lending. We have. Uh, we are initiated. That is uh, uh, going to come in the, uh, uh, another two, three uh, in another week. And uh, the super app uh, and CUG we are going to launch uh, somewhere in July. Thank you. 
what about the digital expenditure and what other initiatives are we taking along with it? So this is only about customer and call center and back office. Where digital driving where credit because our customer touch points, what Central Bank enjoys for last five ten years because of Casa, how are we mapping them on our digital tr trends? Uh uh, we are, uh, see, for uh, uh, digital transformation, actually, uh, the... the no, one thing. One thing. See, this is the technology part of what we are doing. As far as uh, your uh, specific cost is, uh, for the uh, mapping of our CASA customers, already we are doing, because we have two more uh, modules, which we are, uh, 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 you know, maybe in a two or two and a half months time rolling out. One is for the wealth management, that where we have segmented our customers on uh, different uh, profiles. Uh, that is one thing. Another is the insure tech, what we are adopting. So as a one-stop uh, shop, you know, from the mobile and internet banking, these services will be offered. This is the technology enablers, what we are creating. And as far as to garner the actual business, for, for liability customers, liability products that we are having, how to reach out them through the relationship uh, functions. And then on the asset side, we are working out for the bigger corporates, end-to-end -end, uh, digitization of their operations, so that entire ecosystem in which they operate will be captured, so that our business will also grow. And for the corporates also, there is a easy, uh, ease of doing the transactions in the bank. This is the overall part where we are working now. Uh, let's assume that the first part of the journey and the second leg starts well. Can our retail products, whether it's housing loan, car loan, education loan, MSME loans, be a total part of our digital transformation? Yes, yes, definitely yes. Uh, these, these are going to be part of our digital journeys. We are creating both uh, digital as well as assisted journeys uh, uh, with a very smooth flow. Uh, so this will definitely uh, going to be very beneficial and customer convenience is addressed there. Sir, if I'm not mistaken, I've heard in the past Q&A that we have created some kind of a strength of technology, product drivers, as well as designers within our own uh, capabilities and domain within the bank. Can we elaborate something whereby uh, we can most about our own uh, performance led by our own team? Uh, see, we have created a special department, very focused department for this, which we fondly call it as Saint Neo. Uh, under this, uh, we have inducted both the functional and technocrats uh, uh, in, into that uh, department. Uh, we have inducted around uh, 60 people, uh, fresh uh, hands uh, for this uh, uh, from uh, from the market, and we are going to further recruit uh, some more specialized skills for this. So this is going to be, and we are creating uh, a kind of garages uh, for each project, which is uh, running on sprints uh, to get uh, whatever uh, we wanted to uh, design and deliver. This digital transformation, can it be connected to our co-lending business, which we have aspiration to be 25,000 crore book? Yes, the co-lending, uh, the the uh, the first leg, that is uh, uh, lending uh, LOIs part, uh, we have already done it, and uh, probably in another 15 days it will go live. We are automating the co-lending LOIs part. Sir, what is the outlook on our housing loan book uh, as our CASA enables us to be the most aggressive bank in the housing market? Currently, we stand at 44,057. How do we see over a period of next one or two years? See, in housing loan, we will uh, normally we have grown uh, at the level of 15%, and uh, we at least this level we want to maintain. NPA stress is very low, and as you rightly said, uh, we get a lot of good uh, uh, cross selling through our housing loan products, and we have very competitive housing loan product for our female borrowers, which has also gained a lot of good attraction in last two years. So we could, we want to continue to grow at least 50 to 20% in housing loan. 
Now, our digital enablers, we uh, we uh, we essentially target uh, uh, higher ticket size uh, loans. Uh, uh, once we enable this into the digital journeys, we expect uh, there would be more of uh, uh, frontiers for marketing and uh, garnering a high-end ticket size loans. So that will that will definitely get a uh, bigger chunk of uh, the housing loan portfolio. Uh, my next question is to Mr. Vai, sir. As usual, I would like to hear your outlook on the money market and the GSEC. See, uh, GSEC, uh, as you know, uh, 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 based upon certain uh, rebound in recovery of U.S., so uh, the rate cut uh, 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 scenario has little bit shifted towards the end of the year. Rather, there is also a view that this year there may not be a rate cut. So uh, that is the reason that the yields are still hovering at uh, uh, around 720 levels. So we we also feel that uh, with with the with the uh, I think a uh, uh, little bit of more uh, economic activity, if dampened in US then uh, rate cut can happen anywhere near September. As far as Indian context is concerned, definitely rate cut is not going to happen before uh, September or even it may happen in November. So uh, uh, bond market uh, uh, with this uh, uh, global index of bond market also, the euro bond market also get included. We expect around $20 billion uh, dollars of uh, rupee uh, coming into India. So uh, with this, uh, yields can soften a bit, but ultimately the real softening will happen only when the when the stance of the central bank changes and uh, a rate cut happens in the later part of the year. That is the only way. So based on money market and uh, the current situation uh, where RBI stance is concerned, do you see MCLR further going up or it will remain stable at this current level? No, sir. MCLR uh, or uh, uh, rates are uh, already picked up. Uh, I do not see any rise in the lending rates as well as the repo rates or as well as the lending rates of banks, even retail banking rates also. I do not foresee any rise at all at this juncture. Thank you for answering all my questions. If there's any follow-up, I'll come back to you in the queue. Thank you. As yes, there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Raju Barnawal for closing comments. Thank you, MD, sir, for giving the opportunity to host the call. Over to you, sir, for your closing remarks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all the participants for taking out the time and uh, uh, attending to our uh, uh, this uh, conference. And uh, going forward, whatever the guidance what we have given, that uh, bank will be reaching those targets. Uh, and uh, let me assure you and also uh, tell you with confidence that uh, our bank will be reaching the new heights in, in this financial year, that is 24-25. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Antique Stock Broking, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.